Deshaun Hodge is just a normal 14-year-old boy who hates cutting the grass. My mom told me, when I get home, I gotta cut grass. I looked at it like, no, I can't cut the grass. This past summer, Deshaun's mom insisted that if he didn't want to mow the lawn, he had to do something productive with his time. She gave him another option. He could get involved with the Boys and Girls Club summer work program that put youth ages 14 to 18 in paying positions. His mom's ultimatum stuck him between a lawnmower and a hard place. My mom was like, if you don't do this, you're gonna be out here cutting grass, I'm gonna make you do it. Cause you need some, you need a work experience for yourself. You need to do this so you can figure out how to manage stuff, how to do stuff more without other people having to do it for you. Deshaun left the lawn behind and started his very first job. His position, youth coordinator. He'd be working with kids at the Reeb Center on Columbus's south side. Today on Rivet, we're following Deshaun into the world of work. This is an important step, crossing that threshold into our first job. So, how do we get a foot in the working world, and what do we learn once we get there? We decided to ask some of our colleagues at WOSU about their first jobs. I worked at Levi's at the Outlet Mall. My position was sandwich artist at Subway. My first job ever when I was 15 years old, uh, shelving books for the public library in Lexington, Massachusetts, and I was terrible at it. My first job was being a cashier at Teach Out Pool in Des Moines, where I grew up. I worked in the uh, kitchen, uh, made soft serve, which is ice cream and Dairy Queen speak. My first real job, besides babysitting, was working in a drugstore. I was a bag boy, courtesy clerk at Safeway. I worked at a novelty tourist gift shop, and it's like big thing was selling teapots. And what did my coworkers learn? I learned how to fold pants, what people's favorite types of pants were, listening to what the customer wants. I learned about um, the value of saving money, or the importance of it, I should say. I feel like the biggest thing I learned, and this was something that my mother had said to me, was that 80% of life is just showing up. And I think that was the most important lesson anyone could learn, show up. Uh, surprisingly enough, the most important thing I learned was accountability, and uh, that has really helped me uh, later on in life. Not, uh, you know, missing time off and just uh, taking initiative with things and that sort of thing, yeah. I also learned that, um, that I really don't like teapots very much. I find them kind of unusual and pointless. As inconsequential as a start working in the food industry or selling teapots seems, these first jobs matter more than we might think. They give us financial sensibility, confidence, and something called soft skills. When we say soft skills, we mean things like problem solving, good communication, and time management. Kelly McCright is the CEO of Hamilton Reichert, a staffing and recruiting firm with headquarters in Tennessee and offices throughout the country. He puts people to work in industries like manufacturing, hospitality, and IT. Being from Nashville, Kelly finds it easiest to describe soft skills using music as an example. Let's say that, that Carrie Underwood is interviewing drummers to go out on tour for her. And so the drummers all come in and, and she asks them to play a song and they all hit the right fills and you know they're the right tempo. Those are the hard skills. But then she's got to decide who is she going to be on a tour bus with for nine months, you know, and that's where soft skills come in, right? Because those, how do you interact with people in the workplace? And Carrie Underwood isn't the only one who considers these characteristics. A new study found that job recruiters are placing a higher value on soft skills. And Kelly's noticed this need across industries as something rather new. Companies are much more willing to invest and train people on the hard skills if you have the soft skills, which is maybe a reversal from you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago, where they demanded the hard skill. They'd much rather have the soft skills there and teach on the hard skills than the other way around. More and more soft skills are necessary for getting jobs. The issue is that these skills are often learned through on-the-job experience. The American Staffing Association found that the number one obstacle for unemployed job seekers is a lack of job experience and a grasp of these soft skills. 
which is why Boys and Girls Club Columbus believes an early exposure to work will put students on a path to mastering these soft skills and empower them to make independent decisions about their future. Deshaun was one of 59 students in the organization's 2018 summer work program for youth. Each student worked 20 hours a week for eight weeks, making $9 an hour. Every Friday, they spent three hours in development training covering financial literacy and cultural competency in the workplace. We met him on one of the last days of the program during the Friday workshop at a branch of the Columbus Metropolitan Library. Even though Deshaun agreed to do the program, after his first day as a youth coordinator, he wasn't sure he'd go back. He was intimidated by a new role working with a group he didn't know, and the energetic kids especially got to him. When my mom signed me up, I got kind of scared. The first day, I wasn't going to come back because I didn't know how to do nothing. I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to like work with kids. I, I'd be scared to yell at kids because they would come back and yell at you. That's kind of creepy. Jaquise Hargrove, senior youth engagement strategist at the Boys and Girls Club, helps organize the program. She says that this is the first time many of them take on authority roles. Students have to navigate their positions as workers and leaders. It was very eye-opening for a lot of the kids that worked in the clubs. Um, and, you know, understanding that dynamic again, like, and there are some roles where you fall in between that. You're still receiving instruction from someone and direction and duties. And you're also leading others, so like finding that balance um, in a workspace was, was a very unique experience for them. Dealing with bosses and strangers is one cause for anxiety getting started. But then there was something else that frightened Deshaun on that first day. The timesheet, I didn't know how to do it at all. I was scared. Like, I, I got confused for like a good 30 minutes. How to properly fill out a timesheet is a work formality we take for granted. The Boys and Girls Club's mission to acquaint kids with workplace culture takes on even the most basic steps. As Jaquees explains, Even as simple as like putting both your first and last name. Like, yes, I know you're Kelly, but there are so many Kellys. Like, I want to make sure you get paid and you record things correctly. And attention to detail. Like, you have to pay attention to these little things. So after this very trying first day, Deshaun eventually got the hang of things. He learned how to talk to kids, he figured out how to properly fill out his timesheet, and after all of these lessons, he realized one very important thing. Like, one thing I learned was to ask for help. Don't ever be scared to ask for help. It's always somewhere to find help at. It's always help around somewhere. Asking questions helped Deshaun work through his first day jitters and continue the program, especially since there was a big incentive at the end of it all. An incentive with four wheels and a V8 engine. My dad said, once I got enough money, and he can go half with me on a car. The real car I really wanted was a Chrysler 200. It ain't that much. But if I find a Chrysler 200 with a V8, that's what I want. And a solid black one, yes. $9 an hour adds up as summer work program members collected their paychecks. But once they earned the money, what do they do with it? This program also strives to teach youth money-saving techniques. Deshaun says budgeting was the most important lesson he learned in the program. Yeah, I learned how to manage my money. I learned how to save it instead of spending it on stuff that I really want. I learned how to save it up so I can get something that I really need in life. So if I need something for school, I got the money to pay for it. I ain't got to ask nobody else for it. Youth program coordinator Jaquis says this was the first time many students gave much thought to opening bank accounts and saving money. Getting them to a point where you have a place to put your money and understanding, you know, the difference between a checking and a savings and encouraging them to, you know, open a savings account and put a certain percentage in there. And so, you know, think about teens just having an account or needing a place for their money. So, like, just to give that exposure of, hey, you now have a bank account, you now have somewhere safe to put your money was like a big deal for a lot of young people. Kelly Simmons, youth engagement strategist with Boys and Girls Club Columbus, also organized the summer work program along with Jaquise. She added that the first time exposure was the most important aspect of this program. Exposure to training and opportunities, not just jobs. I think there's a big gap between just what different populations are exposed to. So I went to a high school where it seemed like my only option was college. A lot of our kids go to a high school where they might hear about college, but they don't see that at home. Mm -hmm. And so 
it's kind of connecting the dots and seeing that there's a spectrum of opportunity and a spectrum of possibility and exposing them to all stages and not just exposing them to the end goal or the end job and career, but exposing them to these are the different levels, these are the different steps, different trainings. This program is based on student interaction and choice. Program leaders want to prepare students for college and the working world. Jaquise explains they wanted to give students the tools to make informed decisions about their futures. We're working with a population, you know, that doesn't frequently get the opportunity to voice their own needs. Well, I mean, I think we all as teens were at some point, unfortunately, told like, you don't know what you're talking about, or you're still young, or you still have so much more to learn. And while those things may be true, you know, to Kelly Smith, they are still independent, you know, thinking beings. And so to give them a space to have that autonomy to say, like, this is what I want to do. This is what I think I want to do, like that's still to be respected. Deshaun really feels a sense of independence and autonomy after his experience. At the end of it all, he says he's grown as a decision maker and his parents, they see him as more of an adult. Yeah, he said I'm more of a man than I was before. Cause when I, when I was like, before this even program, I used to do a lot of childish stuff. I used to do a lot of goofy stuff, but now I do the goofy stuff on the low. I don't do it as much as I used to. Yeah, it's. This is this is a very good work experience, cause for like for my first job, like first job ever. If I didn't do this, I'd have been out here cutting grass. The things we learn on the first job matter. They can impact the rest of our lives. Boys and Girls Club has found that imparting the importance of soft skills in the working world empowers youth and gives them the tools to follow their passions and pursue their definitions of success. Whether this be college, technical school, or getting started in the working world. You've been listening to Rivet, a podcast series that matches people and skills to in-demand jobs. Rivet is produced by WOSU Public Media as part of American Graduate Getting to Work, a national initiative supported by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Special thanks to my WOSU colleagues, Christopher Purdy, Mary Lee Williams, Claire Roth, Nick Evans, Kyle McKinnon, Courtney Paul, Emily Thompson, and Ann Fisher for telling us about their first jobs. And we want to hear your story. Visit us at wosu.org slash rivet or email us at rivet at wosu.org. Rivet is written and produced by me, Leticia Wiggins, and edited by Michael DeBonis. Thanks for listening. Now get back to work. <laughs>